The wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legends. And really, don't even worry, because all those pesky ages and cyclical time theories and stuff don't actually become plot relevant. I know, the name of the series is The Wheel of Time, and yet the fact that time is a wheel in this universe and keeps coming around isn't actually important, because it only happens after thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So, don't even worry about it, throw that out of your mind, here is what is actually important. Thousands of years before the time of our story, there is the Age of Legends, which, as the name suggests, is an age with lots of magic and legendary things happening. This is an age where the big boom, the big thing that was happening, was that the One Power was super strong and awesome. The One Power is the good magic. People that use the One Power are called Aes Sedai. You are just born with the ability to channel the One Power. It isn't something that you can really learn how to do, it's just something you're born to do, and then you can further refine that talent. And the One Power, as its name fails to suggest, is actually two distinct halves. We've got Sidene, the half that is channeled by males, and Sidar, the half that is channeled by females. It is split among gender lines, got it, got it, this is important. The evil magic in this story comes from the Dark One, which is some amorphous being from another reality that is trying to destroy all reality and time as we know it. And this was very, very much a problem because the Dark One was recruiting lots and lots of human minions to his side through promises of power and things like that. These people are known as the Dark Friends. And the leaders of the Dark Friends are known as the Forsaken. There are 13 of them, and they are effectively immortal, so they're still around at the time of the actual story and TV show and books. And the forces of the Dark One also have lots of monsters engineered through magic and human sacrifice. Don't worry about it, it's fine. And the important Shadow Spawn monsters that will come back again and again are the Trollocs, which are the super strong but pretty dumb beastmen, and the Murdral, who are the super strong and very smart ninja wraith swordsmen. But the biggest player in the Age of Legends was Luz Theron Telamon, who was such an awesome magic wielder that they called him the dragon. So Luz Theron Telamon, the dragon, says to people, you know that creepy volcano where the Dark One's influence is coming up through? How about we just go there and plug up the influence so the Dark One can't touch our reality anymore? And all the male Aes Sedai were like, that is the best idea ever, bro. But all the female Aes Sedai were like, this seems like it could go wrong in a lot of ways, how about we don't? But then the male Aes Sedai were like, we're already gone. Don't worry, we're gonna totally banish the Dark One, no problems will happen here. And they do successfully seal off the Dark One from our reality, so his influence is greatly diminished. However, in the process, the Dark One lashes out, and through all of these male channelers, corrupts Sidene. So now, any person, which is the male channelers, that uses Sidene gets corrupted as well. And this is the kind of corruption that builds up every time you use Sidene until you're going on unhinged killing sprees. So as you can imagine, half all the magic users in the world suddenly going on unhinged murder sprees, very, very bad for society as a whole. Pretty much nothing survives, including the original geography of the land, and this is called The Breaking. And Luz Theron killed all of his family, and his new nickname instead of the dragon is The Kinslayer. But don't worry, because there is a prophecy that one day, when the Dark One's influence is once again growing over the world, the dragon will be reborn. In order to save the world from the Dark One, or maybe break the world again? The prophecies are a little ambiguous and everyone's a little worried about that. But in the actual time of our story, which is thousands of years from the breaking, we have a new map and political factions. In the north, you've got the Blight, which is infested with Shadow Spawn. Yes, that is still an ongoing problem thousands of years later. In the west, you've got the Desert, which is populated by the Aiel, which is the Redhead Ninja tribes. In the middle, you have the island of Tarvan, which houses the White Tower, which houses the Aes Sedai. Now, a female-only organization, because the male half of the One True Power is still very much corrupted. And the Aes Sedai have helpfully sorted themselves into their own Hogwarts houses for our wonderful identification. We've got the Red Aja, which is in charge of tracking down any male who dares to channel the One Power and ripping that power away from them violently, traumatically, in a process called gentling. 
And we've also got their rivals, the Blue Aja, which is in charge of political manipulation and machination on the global scale. Many Aes Sedai also have warders, who are traditionally men who are very good fighters, and they have a magical bond with their Aes Sedai. This bond grants them higher stamina and strength and speed, and also a little bit of a telepathic bond with their Aes Sedai. So the warders are the best warriors in the world, the Aes Sedai, most powerful political faction in the world, they're movers and shakers. Which is a contrast to, over here in the Far East, the middle of nowhere ville, the Two Rivers. And it's in the Two Rivers, in the village of Emmons Field, that our story really begins. And that is where our plucky protagonists are from. And oh, actually, one more thing you need to know before we actually kick this story off, which is, remember when we threw out the time is cyclical wheel analogy at the beginning? Well, that is still unimportant, but there is a second time metaphor which is not important, which you actually have to know about, which is time is like a tapestry, where everyone is a thread in that tapestry and is being weaved. What is doing the weaving? What is fate? Well, they refer to it as the wheel, because that is what time is made out of. So characters will often say something like, the wheel weaves as the wheel wills, which is basically time is gonna go how fate wants it to go. And fate is a major player in this story because in that tapestry of time, there are special threads. There are special people called Taviran. And if a Taviran is fated to go do something, the wheel will weave as the wheel wills. And that Taviran is gonna make that happen. Any plot contrivance that needs to occur in order to make that person follow their fate will occur. And many characters in this story are Taviran. So when you think, hey, that seems like a lot of plot contrivances in a row, you are correct. And that is part of the magic of this story. Thanks for watching my frizzle formation. Comment with a dragon emoji and let me know what are you excited for with this TV show. And if you're interested in Wheel of Time merch, you're in luck because I love graphic design and I've made quite a few Wheel of Time designs. So head on over to my store. There's a link in the description of this video.